G'day people, welcome to paradise. My name's Plucky and I'm an Australian. I'm gonna stop you right there because I can already hear you thinking, not another bloody Australian on YouTube, but I'm a bit different people. Well, probably not, but you just have to wait and see. I'm sailing around this big beautiful world of ours on a sailing boat that requires a lot of work. And I'm of course on a really tight budget. Now because of that, beer fishing plays a huge part of my life because simply, if I don't catch, I don't eat. So if you like spear fishing and things about spear fishing and seeing remote locations such as this, maybe you ought to stick around. You might learn something. Now, first topic is, do you need to go deep to catch decent fish? No, not at all, my friend. But you might have to be a bit of a sneaky bastard. Oh baby, a 3.5 kilogram dog snapper, my favorite. In actual fact, I probably would have preferred something a bit smaller, but sometimes you can't have your cake and eat it too. Let's have a look at the first dive and analyze the crap out of it. There are a couple of lessons to be learned in this dive. Number one, look at how slowly I am moving and look at the movement of my fins. I barely move my fins, just for balance, basically. Some people don't mind finning at fish. I think I can see a behavior change in the fish, especially in the context of snapper. And a lot of these fish that I'll be shooting in this whole series of videos is after snapper, I'm after snapper. And they can be diabolically hard to get up upon. And so I'm trying to minimize all noise because as the, you move your fins, the water swirls around and that travels very quickly and it is picked up along the sides of the fish and they are very aware of where you are and what you're doing. So I try not to do that. Also, if you look at my legs, well, you don't want to look at my legs, most of you are males, I hope you don't. Anyway, they're, uh, I wouldn't say they're chunky, but they're way bigger than my bony girl arms and they use up a lot of oxygen, whereas my bony girl arms use up very little. So I reckon when I pull myself along like this, I get another minute or a minute and a half of bottom time. So more time at the bottom, more chance of getting a fish. So basically I'm just going along as slowly as possible and making the least amount of noise. Now I'm gonna use the lay of the land so I see some elkhorn coral and I hide behind and lo and behold, I get a chance of knocking off a fish. I wouldn't say I've done everything right, but if you do most things right, you might have a chance of getting up on the fish and having a shot. This is the largest cubera that I will take. Anything bigger, the flesh is more coarse, it's certainly not tender, it can be rubbery, and the taste sensation goes down. You've also got a greater chance of getting parasites. Now what are we out here for? Spear fishing is a very, very select method of fishing. So why not get the best? And for cubera and snappers, the best is somewhere between one and four and a half kilos. There are a few lessons to be learned in this video. Let's see if this feeble rat's maze of a brain of mine can remember them all. Now I've been to this spot before and I know out front there's some coral rubble and sand 30 metres at 9 metres down. Very shallow. I can't quite make it out and I don't know if there's fish there. So I'm going to hopefully come from here, the shallows, and meander my way down stealthily and come upon this area and hopefully make a nuisance of myself with some snapper. I could swim across the top and dive on it, but 
I will stand out like dog's balls and then the fish on the bottom are going to go, oh, Harry, this guy's back again, let's nick off. You don't want these discussions happening between the fish people. You want to come up on them before these discussions occur. So I'm going to dive down shallow here and make my way down. Now, I really want to go over this lip out front. If I do, I'm going to be exposing my bulk to the snapper that are only, what, 20 metres further on. I don't want to do that. So I swim around the rock and I go into this hole. I'm going to call it the jacuzzi. So I'm in the jacuzzi and I'm my profile is pretty small because all you can see is my head, my green snorkel and my gun. And you're probably going, what's he got a green snorkel for? You can uh, blend into your surroundings too much. I reckon my green snorkel has attracted more fish than a black snorkel because, you know, to get to places I'm usually in gutters or cracks and Basically, I reckon half the time my snorkel's bobbing along and fish go, what's that? So I reckon that's good. If you hide too well, the fish aren't going to see you to be inquisitive because fish are hungry and inquisitive. So this green snorkel, I reckon, is the charm. But anyway, other people would disagree. So I sit in this jacuzzi. I'm not uh, expecting to stay here that long. During a dive, I'll stop in one spot and I'll look. And when I look, when I stop, I tend to look more 180 degree. Whereas when I'm traveling, I'm more focused out the front. So I'm looking around and I'm rewarded with a very inquisitive dog snapper. Maybe he saw the green snorkel, who knows? Bubble coming out of the snorkel, I don't know. Anyway, he comes along. I make a mistake here by getting out of the jacuzzi too early because the fish is still traveling towards me. I could have given another second or two and it would have been a better shot. Now, it would have been more responsible for me because I know my shark shaft is inaccurate. At horizontal shooting, it goes left and down. Left and down, I mean, the left is like up to 150 mils. So when you're taking a shot at fish, uh, you really got to think about it. When I start aiming down, like in this shot, I really got to think about where the shaft's going because it changes again. It's COVID time, I really should buy another shaft, but I can't get out. I'm in the middle of the sticks whilst I was making that video and I couldn't get another shaft, so I had to put up with it. But the point is, I knew it was inaccurate, so I should have let the fish come closer, but I didn't. And look at the shot, people. It is woeful. It is a terrible shot. I mean, come on. Look, gut shots, especially low gut shots, look, it's very soft there. There's a high probability I was going to lose that fish. I was very lucky. It's easy to tear out. What's going to happen? The fish is going to suffer. That's the worst for me. It's going to die, and you're not going to get the fish. I mean, everyone loses you don't want to do that you want to do a kill shot or you want to hit the fish to kill it as fast as possible anyway i am lucky and i get the fish okay so that's not too bad Well, that's about it for the first episode, people. If you liked it, you know, you know what to do. Tick the like and subscribe and press the bell button. Now, because this is a brand new channel, it's entirely up to you about how successful we're gonna be and if I'm gonna return next week. So, if you can do your bit and share it around and support wherever you can, there's some support stuff right at the end of the video. Do what you can, people, because I certainly like doing this and I hope you enjoy watching it. So, up to you, if it's all good, I'll see you next week.